So in this segment, you know, a, a lot has happened in the week that I've been off ill. Some of you guys might not have realised because um, I still had scheduled content going out because I was very lucky um, when I actually recorded a lot of content and just spread it out a bit thinner in the week. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, the DUP. Oh God, the DUP. What a mess. What a mess. So the DUP, Edwin Poot, had ordered his officials to halt Irish sea border checks from midnight. So this was last week. This was around the uh, last Thursday, the 3rd, right? Because this video will go out today, hopefully. Um, and then the court stepped in. So Belfast Court blocks DUP bid to stop the, um, the you know, the checks in the Irish Sea. So a Belfast High Court uh, judge blocked Agricultural Minister Edwin Poot's bid to stop EU-required checks on British goods arriving at Northern Irish ports, dealing another D. Uh, blow a legal blow to the dup's campaign against the brexit trade pro uh, protocol and you've got to give politico some credit here because they'll actually say the word brexit rather than um hide like the bbc typically do but you know they stepped in very quickly and the dup's ultimate play was to collapse stormont and we'll talk about that in a few minutes but um yeah absolute insanity from the people of you know the dup madness absolute madness um, this was their last play, really. Their last throw of the dice. Uh, elections are coming. They are desperate. They're desperate for something to happen. The government's consistently promised, you know, to trigger Article 16. Now they blame uh, Rishi Sunak for not triggering, um, not allowing the Cabinet Office to trigger Article 16, which just shows you that if they really wanted to do it, it's a failure of leadership then at that point. But triggering Article 16 in reality would have been a failure of leadership because at the end of the day, you agreed to checks in the Irish Sea. You can't turn your back on it. It's an internationally binding agreement. It's just madness. Uh, Justice, Justice Adrian Coulter granted an interim injunction on Friday against Poot's order seeking an immediate halt to sanitary and phytosanitary checks at the ports of Belfast and Lahn, which is just, it's just crazy that, you know, Poot's actually tried this and then the um, Westminster government said, oh, it's not our responsibility. Like, what? No, no, it absolutely is. Because we are part of the Northern Ireland broker. We came up with it. We agreed to it. Northern Ireland is part of the UK, unless you're trying to argue that Northern Ireland is its own thing, which you're not, because apparently you are still the Conservative and Unionist Party, but eventually you'll have to get rid of that and just call yourself the, the English Party, won't you? Honestly. Poot's um, Wednesday night instructions faced immediate legal challenge, and senior civil servants refused to comply pending receipt of their own legal advice. Now, we don't know um, what legal advice Edwin Poot's actually got in the run-up to this. He says he got sound legal advice. Um... You know, we'll see when this goes to court on the 3rd of March. Um, no, sorry, 7th of March. But, uh, yeah, you know, the civil servants did the right thing here and didn't um, adhere to, um, in my opinion, Poots is law-breaking, really, or his order to break the law. We'll have to see what uh, legal advice he got. I'm not a lawyer, um, so I can't say definitively, really, if he broke the law. But in my opinion, it definitely appears that way. In his judgment, Coulter noted that physical checks on British goods arriving in Northern Ireland had been taking pace, uh, place since the protocol treaties trade rules went live in January 2020, raising fundamental questions as to why stop now. I'll tell you, Mr. Uh, Justice Coulter, it's because elections are coming. He said enforcement of the protocol's SPS requirements must apply until the dispute could be considered in full at a hearing on March 7th. So that's when the legal proceedings will start. But this is an emergency court injunction, which has happened very, very quickly. Um, you know, it's... I, again, I, I don't know how the courts work, but they stepped in within a day of this happening and there were already stories about how um, checks were continuing in the um, Irish Sea, regardless of what Poots tried. Um, he says, there shouldn't be any doubt or confusion hanging over those civil servants who have to comply with the law, Colton said. Friday's judgment is the latest in a series of rulings against the DUP's efforts to overturn the protocol, a part of the 2019 withdrawal agreement. Because without the Northern Ireland protocol, there wouldn't have been a withdrawal agreement. There wouldn't have been Brexit. At least not that iteration of the withdrawal agreement. In June, Colton rejected a unionist lawsuit uh, seeking to declare the protocol unconstitutional. In October, another High Court judge ruled that the DUP must stop 
boycotting regularly scheduled meetings with the Irish government to promote all Ireland cooperation, a goal of Northern Ireland's 1998 peace accord or the Belfast Agreement, or as it's known as the Good Friday Agreement, however you want to define it. But point being is that the DUP have taken massive legal L's from British courts, um, which they seem to enjoy by the looks of it. You know, three times there is. Uh, they've taken big L's, but um, you know this wasn't just the f- the only thing the DUP did. They've essentially collapsed Stormont with um, uh, Given Paul Given resigning as first minister, which gets rid of the uh, Michelle O'Neill's post as deputy first minister. Sinn Fein has called for early elections as a result of this because you know Sinn Fein are doing really well in the polls, and um, the DUP are not doing so well in the polls. And uh, po- point being is that look, the situation is the Northern Ireland Protocol is here to stay. Um, the DUP have failed to accept this and they are looking to actively damage, in my opinion, damage Northern Ireland. It very much seems that way. Why would you tank their, you know, assembly? It doesn't it doesn't make any sense unless you're actively looking to cause harm. It's just very painful, the situation in Northern Ireland, when you've got absolute charlatans running the show. Trust me, I've seen them in Westminster, but this lot seemed just as bad. But what more, what more can you say? They've um, tried to potentially break international law and also British law. Let's not forget the withdrawal agreement is a part of British law. They've also um, collapsed their own assembly, which gives them a voice so they can air grievances and talk about the issues they have with the protocol, tried to collapse that. And um, yeah, the, the DEP need to realise their biggest problem is not the protocol, is not the EU, it's not Ireland. Their biggest problem is the Westminster government. And as soon as they realise that, they'll be in a much better place. But um, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.